Hello, we're Lemon Knife, back with 90 through 81 of our list. Woo! I'm going to go first this time with Hold Steady Slapped Actress as my number 90. Ugh, I'm not an actress, Mia. Why you... Sometimes actors get slapped. That's true. I guess they both both get slapped in the biz. So this go is on. kind of a great, <laughs> great song by them, kind mm -hmm. of a more of a slow slow burn building one great closer like yeah closer great closer party. closer for a set or closer for an album i actually Which forget it was. if it's it, the, it was the closer, oh, the album, the closer. I think, yeah. okay good yeah it's perfect yeah like kind of just build it choruses build up it's nice like bridge just awesome song yeah. awesome riff awesome stuff i'm showing off the ice cream cones again for those of you just turning in Anyway, it's Rock With You by Michael Jackson. So, I mean, of course, I'm loath to mention that the, the name. That's the one that goes for... like, Dirty Diana. No. Okay. It's the one that goes, I want to rock with you all night. It's off the Off the Wall album. Off the Off the Wall album, which I prefer to Thriller personally, but... Is I, that Thriller if, was uh, the... Don't Stop Till You Get Enough? That's Don't Stop Till You Get Enough okay. as well. And that's, that, that's the album I favor. Is that one to be starting something? I think that might have been Thriller. Oh, okay. Or one of the other ones. I'll give him a tie then. Yeah. Oh, is that a... No, a that Jackson, was just me. Jackson move? No, it, it, it wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't even trying to do that, but I guess it is now. So why do you like the song? Right. Uh, well, I, I, I think it, it's got some fantastically complex chord progressions for the genre, and um, that makes it sound really, really, you know, bright and uh, interesting while still being extremely danceable and... Uh, Nice little key change, you know. It's just like one of the happiest songs on the planet. You can't not smile one, you know. All right. My 89 is Gaslight Anthem, the 59 sound. Mm. So this is kind of just a, a perfect, one of these songs that's like really perfect in its conciseness. It's kind of got like two verses, bridge, chorus, outro, but just like perfectly like structured, like, uh, you know, these great like pre choruses with this like ding, ding, and just like really ding, catchy ding. like catchy chorus bridge that kind of builds up with the backing vocals over it. Oh yeah. And just something where I just like really I listen to it, it's like I'm engaged the whole way just because of mm -hmm. how many different things are going on and then nice like sad lyrics about someone dying in a car crash. Oh yeah, nice sad lyrics. Nice sad lyrics, yep. Common theme for you though, isn't it? <laughs> car crashes? Car crashes, death, water. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how many other car crash songs are on the list. Probably some water ones. Definitely some death ones. Definitely like some water ones. Definitely some death ones. At least one car crash one, I suppose. 89. Hey, you need to see the number in the ice cream cone. Yep. Is Paris 1919 by John Cale. <laughs> Since we can't play the... Uh, song on youtube yep. we're just gonna you do our bastardized uh, <laughs> boom, boom. uh but but uh, uh last video i referred to chicago by Soup john stevens i love this one for a very similar reason it's a wonderful blend of uh, orchestral and kind of a you know a traditional singer songwriter thing in this case yeah and um i think the vocals complement it well it's very you know literary and i'm always a sucker for literary things so i really enjoy that one all right my number 88 is one of my favorite songs to cover uh, we've done it a few times live with Lemon Knife. Mm -hmm. What's your guess? We've done a few. Strychnine! Oh, yes. This is a way through it. This might yeah. even be, I don't have that many old songs on my list, I don't think, or incredibly old songs on my list, so this might even be the oldest coming out in the mid-60s. It's very punk uh, for the day, yeah. Yeah, very punk, like trailblazers and that kind of thing and just like a completely manic insane delivery the whole way through which makes it perfect for john to sing live yes, like, wow all right mia is safe the sonics are gone you can come back okay the sonics are gone they all went to sonic you. thank you they, they went to get some sonic shakes and nice mozzarella place, sticks yeah. yep 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 88 do 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 as long as it's run around. But yes, I'm already having way too much fun doing these. 
So uh, we're getting we're starting to get proggy on the list now. You knew it was gonna happen sometime. Um, and I think this one is like a surprisingly concise prog song. Yeah, I three and like. a half minutes. And also just yeah. like fits in a bunch of proggy stuff. Yeah, they fit like minutes. a lot of cool riffs cool sounds. Now, some of the lyrics I'm not really sure I get. Like, did we really count to 100? Well, did you, I think? What, is We're this... going to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but... <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, great sound. Great bass work, of course, by uh, Mr. Squire, and uh, good stuff, and great guitar riff. A very, very memorable guitar riff that we were just yep. bastardizing. With bastardizing. The... Any seven. Uh, I have a very uh, un uncreative choice by the band here. So this is The Smiths' Big Mouth Strikes Again. Oh, uh, yeah. Which I just, I think it's their best. It might not be Morrissey's, like, top-tier lyrics, but it's still got lots of classic lyrics, lines though. by him, and then it's, like, by far their best guitar, I think. Like, just that Fantastic. that riff, like, that second riff. Yeah. So just great song, great Morrissey. Great Johnny Marr. Yeah. Great sorry rhythm section. We didn't actually learn your names. I'm, Joyce. Right. Joyce. I think. Joyce. Well, which Rourke? one was Joyce? Rourke and Joyce. Rourke and maybe? Joyce. Tell us in the they comment don't even section. Get, they don't even get Yeah, first tell us names. in the comment <laughs> section if uh, we're wrong. Rourke and Joyce. Well, we're sorry. Uh, as you can tell, we're not experts. We're, that also, was actually, we're also not sorry. I am. Okay. That was actually one of my uh, hacked ones. It, was, it almost uh. made it. So, uh... Morrissey will throw a, a sorrow party for it. Don't worry, he's, uh, later on as well. Uh, 87, speaking of, uh, scathing, scathing lyrics, we have Dear mm. God by XTC. Now, if that's not scathing, I love the format, first of all. It starts off with the kid singing, because the kid yeah. is writing the letters starting off, then he's growing up, he's continuing to write these letters, and, hey, God, hey, how about now? How about now? Then by the end, it's kind of like the God, you know, the child that's and the furious, man simultaneously... Yeah have accepted that's why the child comes back in like uh, you know all of that childhood faith is just like bugger it you know i don't believe in you so uh good good scathing work by xtc great story it's almost almost a little like prog epic or whatever yeah it's a wonderfully mm, epic song a fairly short, short epic yeah. yeah so they did something wonderful there all right my 86 is going to be the first of probably a few uh crazy arm songs on my list oh, and this yeah? is roasting river so this is a song where it starts out with it kind of almost the opposite of Dear God. It kind of starts right out with this like mm -hmm. driving punk beat and yelling about burning flags and stuff. And then it kind of transitions to this maybe mandolin. I don't know if you remember the song, Olaf. But I, I want to say mandolin. I think mandolin, hand. like this mellow mandolin part where it's more kind of mortality accepting, like mm -hmm. uh, all these things like we're born and gone again. And then it goes to a bridge, it kind of goes full circle where it goes back to that part and then ends on the, the like, heavy part. Just sung with, just, like, I love the furious energy and then I love the kind of, like, contemplative, uh, like, oh, mandolin. Yeah. Nice pick, nice pick. I, Go I listen to Crazy Arm, please. Find them. Find Get them, them to tour America. Uh, 86. Six. Speaking of Johnny Marr, actually, he's back on this yeah. one. Uh, this is from my favorite Modest Mouse album. Uh, we were dead before the ship even sank. Regrettably, this is gonna be the only Modest Mouse song on the list. The I actually have quite... none on my list. Oh, I'm kind of shocked. Yeah, they they've been my one of my favorite bands for a long time, but just making this, it was like uh, none of these quite make it as like the things that I like most want to hear. Like they would probably have like. 30 or so songs if I was doing a top 500 or something. Sure, but yeah. None of them quite made my list. But I love, I mean, I love the guitar sound, obviously. Yeah, I love it's how a great driving song, it is. Yeah. And, Super fun. Uh, it's like the manic, but not so manic. It's distracting vocal. Yeah. It's certainly a large leap between Dashboard and uh, doing the Cockroach, which is like... Oh, yeah, another great song. Way down here, and <sighs> I kind of despise it, but not as much as I used to. Please shut up! <laughs> All right, 85, Blue Oyster Cult, The Great Sun Jester. Oh, lovely song. I think some of their songs uh, might be getting lower than they deserve on my list. Like, some of their bigger songs, just because I've heard them yeah. so many times. So this one, I kind of first heard it only a few years ago, so it's very fresh in my mind. And it's just, like, 
this perfect it's like this very pretty ballad that kind of goes to a nice like faster part and by the end like it's gone from this like kind of serious mournful thing to mm -hmm. like him just like yelling and freaking I out really getting energetic about it it's about i don't know a sun gesture he's losing his powers or something yeah like the jackals are attacking him and he's i'm got sure it's a metaphor for something yeah I don't want to think about what the jackals are doing to his manhood, Mia. Let's go on to your uh, number. Oh, good God, yeah. Uh, 85. All right, number 85 is the first one of a ridiculously large amount of songs by these guys. For th those of you who know me very easily know that these guys are my number one band ever and will forever be. Dragon Attack. Which is interesting because they're like the top three artists that first appears like the lowest on the list, but they have so many damn songs on the list, it doesn't matter. Um, but Dragon Attack in particular is like, it's not quite enough to earn the respect of the rest of them, but it's got a fantastic riff, uh, some lovely bass work by uh, Mr. Deacon. It's this nice, you know, kind of continuous, groovy thing that, you know, it, it kind of builds very, very gradually for such a short song, but by the end it's kind of going this big solo bit. Speaking of Queen, <gasps> 84, Dead on Time by uh, Queen. Ah, yeah. Probably their punkiest song. Just uh, this nonstop, all out, and it's kind of like lyrically, it's tearing into like people kind of like racing through life, just trying to get like the, get paid, the ladder, get, get paid, get laid. Then be dead. And then suddenly. The dead. Great riff, great drumming, oh, yeah. just like rocking out one. Some great instrumentalism there. 84 is a number by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, which I now reveal. Carry on. So these guys are probably my favorite harmonizers in rock. They've just, you know, they're four different people. It's not just one person dubbing it over and over, which is why mm -hmm. they're, you know, other people don't quite make it. Uh, I, no, I guess I should say Queen would be because, but they like dub themselves over so many times. These guys live are just mm. even even later on like really had a really really wonderful combination of vocals, mm -hmm. and this one really shows it off best. Almost the entire song is sung in harmony. Oh wow! And yeah, it's it, it, it's really good. Wonderful melodies and. All right, my eighty three has the best title of any song on the list. Can you guess it? Well, we've already established it's not the Mafia Stole My Guitar. Uh, no. Is it one of those really lengthy... Uh... Yeah, go on. Ghost Ship of Cannibal Rats! By Billy Talent. Great heavy riff. Rocking out, you know. Respect! I'm going to keep saying rocking out over and over. <laughs> it's not going to get any better. Uh, hey, you know, if it, if it does, it does. It's a, but just great, nice, heavy song, concise, furious delivery. Oh, yeah. I think it's, a, I think it's about one, global yeah. warming. Uh, maybe it's just about cannibal rats. Maybe it could just be other. about cannibal rats. You know, in, in our partisan times, we can all agree cannibal, cannibal rats, rats are, are bad. bad. I don't know if we even can, you know. If, o if Obama came out against cannibal rats, uh, you know Trump would be, like, trying to get cannibal rats uh. installed in, like, every, every home. Let's not get political uh, extensively <laughs> yeah. here, yep. please. 83, remarkably low for how much influence they've had otherwise, figured out by Royal Blood. Uh, and they are really, I feel like if they that song had been around longer, it might be higher up, but I mean, it's been, it's been around, what, six years? And, uh, but anyway, uh, they, were the, they were the band that sort of gave birth to Lemon Knife, or perhaps raised Lemon Knife, I'd say... Muse probably gave birth to us. Yeah, they, Royal Blood gave you the idea that it could work to do. The they were thing. the babysitter, you know. Yeah. They were they were the nanny later on, and so that's just a great riff and a remark again, remarkably huge sound for two people. Good job, Jarvis, and who was the <laughs> other one? Emmanuel, apparently. Jarvis and Emmanuel. Great that's work. not their real names. It was a long, oh, long was that ago. Not based, was that not based on their real names? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. You didn't, oh, you didn't realize right. that the entire time we've been... <laughs> I'm sure I did when I created... All right. Well, hopefully they won't, on, hopefully on, they won't smash a pine over our heads. Uh, My 82 nothing. is Pearl Jam Porch. Uh... What the F is this My top, though? My top uh, Pearl Jam song on the list comes right at you swinging. 
Uh, you mean that's your highest ranked one? I'm surprised with that. I think yeah, so. Yeah, it is. Ooh. I do like a lot of their other songs. This is my highest ranked one, favorite one. Just super concise. It somehow it's like this, uh, like it almost it feels epic, and it's like three and a half minutes long. There's a lot of this on this on our both our lists. Yeah, I think. it just starts right in, right in straight into a verse, and then like the middle half of the song is just this like slowed down jam that builds back up and up until it's you know him just ex like exclaiming and like yeah. For As her, any better will over do. Over and over. Yeah. Great vocalist he was. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where my 81 went. I'm going to probably have to table. Uh, uh, it's fine. But anyway, number 82, for a very interesting reason, is the song about your only friend that's not your only friend, but he's a little glowing friend, but really he's not actually your friend, but he is. It's a song from perspective of a nightlight, first of all. Second of all, it's just such a quirkily written, but like still really beautiful sort of a thing. And the reason, the reason it stuck around my list, even though I like nearly, very nearly deleted it and then figured I'd put it back on, is that I'm a children's librarian, okay, and this song mm -hmm. is on the kids library playlist that I play during the programs. And this is the one that I just want to tout endlessly because They Might Be Giants are also like a great kids group, as it turned yeah. out on the other end. And uh, I just this song just makes my heart swell up because of that. I don't know. Like very, a birdhouse in my heart. Very charm, charming song, you know. It is. It is. I, I don't think anyone can hate it. Excuse Are you saying? Me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna wonder. I, I was wondering for a sec. All right, my number eighty-one is uh, "Burn" by bear, Deep Purple. Bear, bear. Bear. Super. Another one's oh, kind of partially one. on there. Just. Loving the drumming in that one. Oh, Love yeah. drumming along to it. Kind of just, uh, the whole band are doing great. Like, there's well, epic guitar solos. Ian Gillian screaming about the woman burning everyone. I think in this song, there's actually David Coverdale. Oh, David Coverdale. Okay. It's like the Mark III edition or something. But he also does well. Who you don't want to be in White Snake? Can you believe it? Huh. Coming to a number one near you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, great, great song. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I felt the need to put that back great in. Song. Yeah. White snake. And... All right, so what's I'm your mystery? A, a mystery. Don't worry, it's the super incomprehensible nocturne. Uh, Opus Nine, Number Two by Frederick Chopin. It's a piano song. This is where John starts to be like me a little. It's a song I've been trying forever to learn on piano and just, it, it's a fairly simple song to play, but I mean, without, you know, your big embellishments, it's a very simple melody, <laughs> and yet it, it's this really, really notable, wonderful, like shockingly soothing, not to the point of falling asleep, song that you've probably heard more times than you think you have. And it's so notable, in fact, that I'm not the only rock person who thinks this, because uh, in, in actuality, Are we attached back to, to the- about White Snake? Attached to the end, no, go back to sleep. Attached to the end of a song called United States of Eurasia by Muse, another band who's going to figure very heavily on this list, is there is Matt Bellamy soloing on Nocturne while there's a bunch of, I don't know, uh, sound effects of war and apocalypse happening. And I guess the sound effects of war and apocalypse means it can't be called Nocturne. Unfortunately, they had to add plus collateral damage. You can't make this stuff up. United States of Eurasia plus collateral damage in parentheses. And that's going to do it for us this time.